G'day guys. Ever wanted to stay in the shadow of a castle? Jurocast is your place to go. There's the castle. This is the old town. Stick around for the, uh, the video. I'll talk about where I stayed, what I did, how much it cost me, and uh, why living right underneath the castle is a really cool thing to do. As usual, with uh, the start of any of my videos, I run through where I stayed. This is an Airbnb that I stayed at. Nice and quick little run through. Stick around to the end of that and see why I chose this particular Airbnb. Hint, right there. Okay, quick little walk into new accommodation for the next week in Jerocasta in Albania. Um, here we have the entryway, come straight in, you can see the washing machine there, straight into uh, the bathroom ahead. Um, it's the second bathroom I've had in a row now, which has been a dry bathroom, which is really cool. Uh, by dry bathroom, I mean it's got a screen so that not everything gets wet. Um, spin around into the living area. Fairly simple, tiny little table. Um, air conditioner on the wall, so that's all good. Um, kitchen area. Fairly, uh, fairly well stocked kitchen area. Oven up in the corner there. Um, I'm not going to open all the cupboards and cabinets. It's, it's fine. I'm going to take you into the spare bedroom first, which is this one. So, just a simple little spare bedroom, two single beds, and air conditioning again, and. Some cupboards, the door doesn't want to stay open, and the piece de la resistance is through here. So you've got the main bedroom with TV, all that sort of stuff. But this is why I rented this room. Look at that. That is my view. outside my window. So I'm looking straight out the castle. And if I go the other way, I'm looking down towards the mountain ranges. So there you go. Got the next week in uh, this accommodation. I have a feeling I'm going to be up there in that uh, castle quite a lot. So my first two days in Jurocasta were really, really nice weather. Got a bit sunburned. Um, well and truly worthwhile uh, weather for travelling up to the castle. Man, that's a walk. Uh, walking up to the top of there is uh, a, a bit of effort, but uh, well worth it. It only costs 400 left to get into the castle, so well worth uh, doing, and you can spend hours there. Um, Stick around and watch that, and then I'll come back and talk about some of the other bits of the uh, old town. think of when you think old town in Europe. To me, I, I think cobblestone, cobblestone streets, I think um, centuries old buildings, traditional restaurants, you get all of that here in Jurocasta. So this is a bit of a walkthrough video of the streets of Jurocasta. Um, I'm not going to prattle to you while I'm walking, just watch this. Um, it's a nice quick summary of uh, what it's like walking around the five or six streets that are uh, predominantly the old town of Jurocasta.
guys, just uh, going for a bit of a walk around Giracasta, heading off towards one of the ethnographic museums. Just waiting for the, just waiting for the traffic to get past me because it's been dead quiet all morning and all of a sudden there's like 10 or 15 cars decided to drive past. Anyway, so the actual touristy part of the old town is up there, which is where I'm staying and where those other videos are from. Now we're getting into just basically what they call the old city. These cobblestones go all the way down into the new city and then the new city's got standard sort of modern roads. Um, first two days I was here, the weather was incredible. Um, but the last two days it's been raining, as you can see it's not looking great. And it's supposed to be severe storms this Arve. And it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. So I've got like two or three hours at most to uh, go for a bit of a walk. Anyway, I'll do um, some streetscape stuff. I won't do a direct view all the way. Um, as you can see, there's little restaurants and stuff and bars outside the touristy area as well, which is cool. What I really like this stuff is um, we're outside the, the old old town touristy area, but look at the look at the buildings in the background there. These are still centuries old buildings, centuries old walls, and really cool stuff well and truly if you get if you come here and you're doing more than a single day trip then make sure you spend a bit of time just walking around outside the touristy area because it's when you get out there that you see some really nice stuff I mean don't get me wrong the tourist area is incredible really glad I'm staying there but this is um, this is a little bit more authentic so what else can you do in Jiracasta? Well, as I said, you can go to the castle. I'm going to keep point to that because I think it's really cool. There's also an ethnographic museum. Um, I, I haven't done any video inside that. Um, I think it's not very fair that someone puts hundreds of dollars and or thousands of dollars and lots of time into building something up and then I cheat them out of a tourist by giving you a video so you don't have to come in. Definitely come in. It's, uh, it's, it's got some great stuff. The ethnographic museum is in the... Uh, uh, the former house of the communist dictator uh, in the Hoxha. Uh, so it's a little bit of controversy um, if you read online. People get a little bit upset about some of the um, history displayed there. That's probably understandable, but that's what a ethnographic uh, museum is all about, showing all of the history, not the selective history. So guys, if you're enjoying what you're getting out of these uh, these videos, please consider liking the video and also subscribing to my channel. Basically for the next God knows how long, years, I'm going to be doing exactly this type of thing, travelling around the world, um, looking at different places. So I'd love for you to come along with me. So click the like and subscribe buttons and uh, uh, comment down below on places you think I should go and see. I am flexible, I am open. If you've got an idea of somewhere that I should go, tell me. Love to hear it. Another thing you can do in Duracaster is go to the Skenduli House. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. That's a um, 17th century house uh, built in the Ottoman Empire. But it's also got um, elements of other architectures uh, from later periods. Uh, it's an amazing house that's um, been owned, I think, for seven generations. Um, it was either seven or nine generations um, still owning the property. Um, it's a great spot. Just be um, aware there is a 300 lek fee for entry, but they're a little bit um, interesting in the way they collect the fee because there's supposed to be a dude down the bottom uh, collecting it, but he, he goes off wandering and you'll eventually come across another family member who will say, have you paid yet? They're not trying to be aggressive or anything, it's just that they, they're kind of used to people getting passed without paying, and so you just pay them when you meet them. Uh, so I got the, the lady... Uh, um, 300 lake. She was on the third floor. That's not where they're supposed to be collecting the, uh, the, the fee, but that's where she happened to be. Anyway, um, check out a couple of photos and uh, um, a video here of uh, Skin Dilly House.
only here for five days because the first day and uh, last day were travel days. By the time you go to the castle and spend a day doing that, then go to some of the museums, walk around the town, and then get plagued by bad weather, <laughs> you run out of time. Uh, I know some people come up here as, as day trips from uh, uh, from Saranda. If you're going to do a day trip, then definitely do the castle as your first priority. Try and get here as early as you can. If you're driving, get here early. Um, by about 10 o'clock, the tour buses have arrived, and then you're slowed right down on what you can get into and what you can see, especially in the museums where um, there's tiny little rooms built in the 17th century and suddenly got 15 or 20 uh, uh, tourists cramming in shoulder to shoulder. So try and get here early, uh, try and see as much as you can before the crowds arrive. Best time of year to come is definitely shower seasons, don't come in the summer. Um, I'm here in October, early October, and it's just right as far as uh, crowd size. Winter would probably be okay, a lot more will be closed, um, but you'd certainly, uh, you'd certainly have a lot to enjoy in winter here as well. Okay. So now it's time to cover up this nice little view and I'll stick up the spreadsheet telling you uh, what my costs were. Again, uh, this was a one week trip. Um, normally I'd prefer to be doing one month in this place, but I don't think you can justify one month in Jurakasta. Um, so again, the, um, the, the things that are highlighted in blue are my routine expenses. This is just a one week portion of those routine expenses. It doesn't matter where I am, I'll pay the same. Um, stayed in an Airbnb, so the price is there. One of the challenges here in Jurakasta is, unlike um, Duras or uh, Tirana, um, you don't have big supermarkets right next to you. So you can't just trip off and buy a whole heap of food and cook it in your kitchen. There's a great kitchen in this uh, Airbnb, just can't really use it. Um, now there are um, supermarkets in the new, new city of Jurakasta, but that's a good 20, 30 minute walk away or a, uh, a, a taxi ride, which I didn't really want to do. Plus, I'm surrounded by traditional restaurants. So why would I cook if I've got uh, such good food immediately available to me? Um, from here, I go to Saranda. Uh, in Saranda, I'm definitely doing more cooking because uh, first of all, I'm getting to the edge of shoulder season and into the winter. Um, so a lot more places are going to be closed. Plus, I've just got access to more facilities, more uh, supermarkets. Stick around if you want to know all about surrender. Um, that'll be uh, a video coming up in the next week or two. Cheers.